first thing we're going to go over is temporary hair color. But to understand what it is, I want to talk to you about the types of hair color we have. They fall into four categories, which kind of amazes me. When I studied, they fell into three categories. And about five or six years ago, there was five categories of them. So color is a fast-changing thing. The four categories we have now are temporary, semi-permanent, demi-permanent, and permanent hair color. So what we're going to discuss today is the temporary. We also falls into hair coloring as we go through it are going to go through hair lightening. So there's one major thing I want you to understand, the difference in hair coloring and hair lightening. Hair coloring is the addition of color. Hair lightening is the subtraction of color. Because if we're going to take hair and lighten it, we've got to remove color from it. <clears throat> the process of hair lightening is often referred to as bleaching or decolorizing, which is a chemical process involving the diffusion of the natural color pigment or artificial color from the hair. This process takes place in permanent hair coloring if we're using a lighter shade and also in hair lighteners. And I want you to remember that word diffuse. Just like when you splatter bleach on your blue jeans, you think it removes the color, but it actually diffuses the color into some, such small granules that we can no longer see it. And that's what happens in hair coloring. All permanent hair color products and lighteners contain both a developer and oxidizing agent or alkalizing agent as part of their composition. And what we're going into today is temporary. It does not contain that. The role of the alkalizing ingredient, which is usually ammonia or an ammonia substitute, is to raise the cuticle of the hair fiber so the tint can penetrate, to facilitate the formation of tints within the hair fiber, and that's also the oxidation reaction. Y'all remember oxidation? And also brings about the lightening action of peroxide, and our, all of our permanent hair color products are mixed with peroxide. When the tint containing the alkalizing ingredient is combined with the developer, which is our hydrogen peroxide, the peroxide becomes alkaline and then it diffuses or breaks up through the hair fiber, entering the cortex where the melanin is located. The lightening occurs when the alkaline peroxide breaks up the melanin and replaces it with a new color. Now for today's lecture, we're talking about temporary hair color. So first off, we've just talked about the chemical reactions. Temporary hair color has no chemical reaction on the hair. Temporary hair color is not bad for the hair. As a matter of fact, most temporary hair color products add sheen and shine to the hair and contain some conditioning agents that help close down the cuticle scales. Now, as wonderful as it may sound, it's not all that great, and I'll talk to you about the reasons it's not in just a moment. But someone who wants just a subtle neutralizer for yellowing hair, or who wants to neutralize unwanted tones, or who would like their hair a little bit darker, temporary hair color would be a good choice. The pigment molecules in temporary color are large. Therefore, they do not penetrate the cuticle layer. So they only coat the hair shaft. Therefore, it's removed by shampooing. But if you have a client whose ends are really porous, where abuse and all, it may stain where those cuticle scales are open. Temporary hair color makes only a physical change, not a physical change in the hair shaft. And we do not have to have a patch test. And we'll discuss in our next units the patch test. Temporary hair colors are available in a variety of colors and products. Color rinses are applied weekly to shampooed hair to add color. The hair is then styled dry. We have colored mousses and gels now used for slight color and for dramatic effect. There is hair mascara used for dramatic effects. And I know you're wondering what hair mascara must look like for the hair. But it has a brush and you just pull it through in certain areas. Sometimes even used for people that has gray hair, and as their new growth comes out, they'll put it on the new growth. You have our spray-on hair colors that are easy to apply, and they're used for special effects. And most of y'all are familiar with those at this time of year because of Halloween. But we also have the blondes and the burgundies, and we put somebody's hair in waves and all. We might highlight some of the waves with that spray-on. 
And we have coloring enhancing shampoos that are used to brighten, to impart a slight color, and to eliminate unwanted tones. Now, we've talked about it and it sounds really good. Let me give you the downsides of it. It does not lighten hair. It will brighten. You know, like if the hair's a little bit yellow, you'll use the bluing rinse. Remember the color wheel we talked about yesterday? Bluing rinses neutralizes the yellow cast in hair. So it will brighten, will not lighten. It will darken. But the problem with taking somebody that's got light hair and wants to see how they'd look with it dark is since it is a coating, it's uneven. So you're going to have places that it does not do well. Also, if you're using a weekly rinse or a color rinse to darken someone's hair, I, I use it now to brighten or to neutralize the yellow tones, but I don't put it on anybody's hair to darken it. And y'all probably heard this about one customer we got, and I'm not going to say who because it's on film, but, and anybody in the community can get it. But they fuss because their hands are dirty when they get through setting or it, when they brush it, it brushes off on their clothes. That's what it is, is a weekly rinse. You've got to be real careful when you put that dark color on there because it's a coating dye. If you spray it with setting lotion, it just rinses off down the towel. Any liquid will take it off the hair. So you've got to use mousses or gels to put on top of it. And again, that makes the coating even more uneven. And then when it dries and you brush it, here comes the little flakes off of the hair. And then if you wear a white collar and it rubs here, the collar but now becomes brown. And when you sleep at night, unless you got a brown pillowcase, you got it rubbed on your pillowcase. And if you get caught in a little afternoon shower, where does it wind up? It looks like our hair is crying brown tears because it runs all down your face. So I don't like it for that. I like it for the brightening effects, and that's the color rinses. I like the sprays for parties, and they're making them in glitters and all now. They look real good for nightwear, for Halloween, and all that kind of stuff. The color enhancing shampoos, we'll discuss these more as we go into some chemical change. Some of them do contain hydrogen peroxide. So over a period of time, they do create some of the chemical changes that makes your hair with the cuticle scale standing open and dry and brittle. All right, do we have questions about temporary hair color? All right.